Hello, this is Ian Vargo with the Pro Audio Files. Welcome to part four in a five-part series all about compression. Today I'm going to show you how you can use different compressors to impart harmonic content, otherwise sometimes known as color or tone, onto your source material. It's a, a popular technique amongst engineers to use compressors almost as equalizers, and I'm going to show you a couple of different compressors and the tones that they bring to the table. Hopefully this will help your mixing, I know it's helped mine. Okay, so let's start with a cool little test. By cool, I mean if you're a nerd like I am, you're going to like this. All right, so in Pro Tools here, I've got a 500 hertz sine tone and a 100 hertz sine tone. I also have, these are inactive right now, but I'll be making them active, five different compressors. After these compressors, I have an insert of the FabFilter Pro Q2, which has a really awesome frequency analyzer. Let's go ahead and hit play and uh, pay attention to the analyzer. So you see there 500 hertz. And 100. Now I'm going to make these compressors active. And what you're going to see is uh, the harmonic content that is imparted onto the signal. That LA-2A goes super high. So as you could see, each of these compressors have their own, um, you know, sonic character that they add to the signal. Let's go down to 100 hertz and uh, let's take a look and listen. And I'm also going to enable the feature uh, in which I hover above the frequency analyzer. A lot of mid-range in the Fairchild. That's really interesting. All right, so please consider this when applying this to musical material. Um, not all compressors are created equal. There are some that have a, a, a boost in the mids, a uh, boost in the highs, make your, your lows fuller. I really like the Fairchild. You'll be, you'll be seeing that later. Um, so just keep this in mind and perform tests like this and be a nerd as often as you can because ultimately you want to know uh, all of the tools that we have at our fingertips as intimately as possible. I'm going to show you that Fairchild on bass technique that I was talking about before. Uh, the Fairchild is an iconic compressor. It was used on, on numerous Beatles recordings, Pink Floyd, very popular in Abbey Road Studios. If you were to attempt to purchase one, you might be able to find one on eBay for twenty or $30,000. Fortunately, Universal Audio makes uh, a more affordable version of it. Let's take a listen to this bass track without the Fairchild engaged. Okay, uh, let's listen, and what I want you to listen for is uh, a mid-range sort of aggression that is added to the signal when I engage the Fairchild, as well as a, a low-frequency bump. You're really going to hear it in the context of the mix, but let's play it soloed for now. Definitely a uh, uh, more smooth and aggressive sound. Uh, we benefit from the dynamic range compression where it uh, really smooths out the performance, brings in some nice characteristics of the, uh, the fingering of the bass, uh, but also we get this really pleasant low frequency bump. Uh, I'm driving the input gain somewhat hard. I've got my threshold set in such a way where I'm only doing about up to 3 to 4 dB of compression. Uh, this version 
of the Fairchild has a side chain filter. So as you see, as I turn up the side chain filter, uh, it is applying less compression because it is receiving less low frequency content. Uh, and of course, it's always great uh, when these plugins have uh, the mix dry wet knob. Right here, I have an instance of the stereo version of the Fairchild that I'm actually using on my master fader. I wanted this track to have a, a really vintage vibe, and, and I really do believe that the Fairchild helped me achieve that. Uh, it's got a really cool tone on the master fader if you use it pretty conservatively. Let's take a listen without any compression. Let's bring it in. The symbols are a little bit brighter, and uh, to me it just sounds a little bit a little bit clearer. I should say that I level matched uh, for the purpose of this tutorial because I know some people get upset when uh, the post-compressed signal is significantly louder than the uncompressed signal, but uh, in the final version of this mix, I did use the output to add some, some gain to the signal. Let's take a listen to it, and I am going to experiment with the uh, mix, dry, wet, and the sidechain filter. So you could hear some of the characteristics that the Fairchild imparts on the Master Fader. If you hear when I have the, the side chain filter all the way off, we have a little bit of pumping, which I actually think is sort of cool uh, in this mix because it's a, supposed to sound like a record from the mid-1960s, but I wouldn't try this on every mix. I really do enjoy the the sort of uh, pumping characteristic that the Fairchild uh, adds every once in a while. Sometimes different compressors have this sort of rhythmic quality that helps with your track, and, and I would definitely say that this is one of them. Next, I'm going to show you how I used a particular compressor to tame a lead guitar part. By tame, I don't necessarily mean dynamic range. I mean that I use the compressor's features to uh, just smooth out tonally uh, the timbre of the part. Let's take a listen without compression. Okay, so it's a pretty cool part. It's got a, a mid-1960s vintage vibe. All I really wanted to do is just, um, I wouldn't say dull it out, but make it a little bit less bright. So what I've got here is the TLA-100A Tube Leveling Amplifier, a collaboration between Summit Audio and Universal Audio. Note, there are plenty of different compressors in the world that have uh, completely variable attack and release times. This is not one of them. Uh, the reason I reached for this compressor is because it has two things that I'm looking for. Uh, it has a saturation knob. So as you're going to hear, I'm going to turn it up and we're going to get some, some high frequency saturation imparted onto the signal. And of course, I really love any compressor that has the parallel inject feature. Let's take a listen to what I did to the signal. Thank you. 
I've got a fast attack and a fast release because I really want to catch those picky transients. I also have a good amount of saturation because I wanted to give it sort of a, a dirty vintage vibe. And then I am using mostly uh, the wet signal, but I like the original signal. Uh, and so I left it about 75% wet. Lastly, I'm going to show you a technique that I actually started using somewhat recently. Uh, and that is placing an LA-2A silver edition on the drum bus. Uh, the LA-2A collection from Universal Audio comes with several different types of LA-2A. I just find, and as you'll hear, uh, the silver edition just has like a really nice top end character that it imparts on the signal. So let's take a listen to my drum bus. All of my drums at the same time. bring in the compressor. You hear how the cymbals, they don't just become a little bit more lively, and we're not just hearing uh, the, the transient of the kick and snare being tamed a little bit. We also get a little bit more high-end energy, which I think is, is really great. Let's take a listen in the mix. Really helps those cymbals cut through. I also really like the LA-2A Silver on vocals for the same reason that it, it imparts some high frequency content. Let's take a listen. Eyes, had a look back twice, thought my eyes had lied. So not only is it a little bit smoother, but we get a little bit more of the, the throat and, uh, and breathiness in a vocal, if that's what you're looking for. All right, so I hope this has been helpful. If you have any questions, make sure to get in touch and keep an eye out for part five in this five-part series all about compression. This is Ian Vargo with the Pro Audio Files. Make sure to check out Sunny Love and The Moon Parade which is the band that I've been using for this tutorial. Thanks.